Hey. Hey. I feel so shitty. I went to the collective for the first time in six months. I saw Tom. He was Tommy and we didn't talk about anything. We didn't talk about anything. He, every time he's contacted me on Telegram or Messenger, he's always sent me a bunch of hearts and a bunch of things. And we just saw each other and left and I saw, and then I'm walking with Lindsay in the morning and she's like, you gotta get your shit together or else you're gonna fucking hurt people. And you know, I don't think that's okay. Do you want me to be blunt? And I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't know how blunt she could get. And then, I, and then we get to the rally after she throws that all on me and I walk in and I make eye contact with Tom and then Tom gives me a hug and I look over and I wave at David. And then I get home and I get a message from Nigel saying I'm depressed and I miss you. And then I'm supposed to go hang out with Lindsay tonight and she bails to go to the collective to go hang out with Tom. <laughs> Wait, she went to go hang with Tom? <laughs> at the collective. Oh, Lindsay did. Yeah. Really? But then now, now she's not going to the collective anymore and she's going to go to my friend Finn's place where I'm going to, where David is going to. And so it's going to be treat David, Lindsay, Finn, and me after Lindsay shit all this shit to me about what this, and now I'm just going to walk in a room with her and David and Finn. And I was talking to Finn about how upset I was about what Lindsay said to me. So I'm walking in and then I get up in the morning and I go on a camping trip with everyone from the collective. What kind of a mess did I get myself into? And why the fuck did I talk to these people? It's been six months. As soon as I get in, I just, my whole world is shaken. <laughs> I feel like Kyle, you know, he, he's, he's good intentions and he's Kyle. And then suddenly everyone's mad at him or he's created this mess. <laughs> And I always thought, ah, oh, how does Kyle do it? You have to be accountable for your actions, be respectful. And then, you know, I, I'm just living my life. And then I tell Kyle. Well, it's, it doesn't when, take much to irritate people or to create mayhem. When Kyle, when Laura was mad at Kyle, I was thinking in my brain, I was like, I would never do that to another person. I would never do what he did. And then, you know, now I'm, I have a thing with someone else while well, my partner put all of his life savings into a boat that I said that we work on together and now he's depressed on a golf island without me while well, I just started seeing someone else in the week that he was gone. The shitty and the worst thing is I talked to Nigel and he knows me so well and he was like hey um you just wanted someone to fill the void while I was gone you can't last a week without me because you need someone to do everything with you and you need someone to be there for you. And it didn't take you very long to find that. And now you're just having someone fill my spot while I'm not there. And he's right. If, and he was like, if I was around, you wouldn't even be doing any of these things. And it's true, because I wouldn't need you, I wouldn't care. Look, he leaves for a week and I'm in chaos. <laughs> Why do people leave me unattended? <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna walk in, you know, today, my friend lives at this community house and her roommate looks at me and she goes, hi. And I say, good, thanks, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> and she looked me blank in the fucking eyes and just kind of was like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Give me that look. And then I turned over my friend and I was like, I'm not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine what's going to happen tonight. Well, the thing is too, like I'm feeling so many emotions come up that I, 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 I already know that I'm going to pull David aside, just dump all of my emotions on him and use him as a safety net. And he'll be like, well, I like you. I can do that. And then I'm just hurting him. Like I was in the car with him yesterday and I was like, oh, I wish, nah, 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 nah. obviously it probably made him. And then today I saw him at the rally. I made eye contact with him. He waved at me and I walked away. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to fucking hurt people.
That's all I can, that's all I'm good at. Everyone, every friend, every female friend I've been close to at the gym, they've called me out on some kind of shit. And I get really mad. I get really mad. I was, my friend Finn that I'm going to see, we had a big talk. They were mad at me about a bunch of stuff. I didn't see them for a couple months. And now Lindsay is just being blunt as fuck to me. And now I got to see her with my other friend that was blunt as fuck for me three months ago that I avoided in the same room with David, with Lindsay, who's mad at me, and with Tree. My favorite part is the fact that Tree's there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so Lindsay's still mad at you after? Well, I sent her a big message and I was like, my nervous system was not prepared for what you put on me. And I was already drained and I was feeling hyper emotional and anxious. And I don't appreciate the fact that you were that blunt to me before walking into a really large setting when I wasn't, when I had already told you that I was drained and not feeling the best. And she was like, well, I asked you if you wanted me to be blunt and you said, yeah, but I guess you didn't know that blunt. Uh, my pizza's here, one second. No fucking clue what my dynamic is with Tom. Well, you haven't seen him in six months, you say? Yeah. So, I mean, that would be normal, right? Well, when I saw him yesterday, he gave me a giant hug. Um, Where's my neck? There's something I don't get, though. Do you remember when you were really pissed at Nigel? Huh? And he had sort of said, I'm going to break with it, break up with you unless you get better. And then you went through that. And then did you get better? Like, did you change? Mm -hmm. You did. I changed and then he left to go to Cortez. And then I used all my new tools that I had adapted to change for him to make a better dynamic with David accidentally. <laughs> well, I think that's what humans do. We tend to, you know, leapfrog from relationship to relationship and sort of take, start over again and do something new. I mean, you, you were, you were wanting more, space and you were wanting to to have more people involved right and didn't you have an agreement with him that when he's in cortez he's on cortez and when you're in victoria you're in victoria kind of thing didn't well you? i talked to him about it and he was like he was like i keep you in my heart everywhere and so i mean i i would like that to be mutual and i was like okay but are you okay with me cuddling with people and touching other people that'd be platonically but when you're not around, because that's really important to me. And I feel like my needs aren't going to be met if I see you maybe once a week. Like the last month, I think I see him once a week and he stay, he'd stay over, we'd go to bed, he'd wake up in the morning, have a bunch of chores he has to do. Or, you know, last time I saw him, we saw, I, we saw each other for I think two hours and we went and got groceries together. The thing with Nigel is he says to me, oh, I wish our relationship was like this. And like, oh, I wish we were this. And oh, it's because you don't do this and because I know I, I change and I do this and I need you to change for this or this and this. And I want what you want. We have the same life path. And then when it comes down to it, none of that stuff happens. And maybe it's because I create fucking messages like this. Because what? I think the worst thing on my mind is if I end things with Nigel, which I don't want to do, I convinced him to spend all of his life savings on a fucking lifeboat that we were supposed to live on together. And then he went to go work on it after he bought it. And I stayed in town and started seeing someone new. That's terrible. No, no but, but wait a second. I mean, I remember that you went there and that you weren't getting along. You didn't like it. And you guys were fighting. Mm -hmm. so i mean that's a con you can't erase that context but then also i wasn't communicating with him properly 
I didn't work on any of the skills that I've worked on now. And I wasn't really valuing our relationship and I didn't really care. Right. I was treating him like crap. Right. Right. So in that situation, I mean, that's what happened. And then later on, you guys worked it out or you came to, you know, he set a, a, a boundary and then you said, okay, well, I'll respect your boundary. And I feel like in my love language is quality time is really important. And Nigel's been gone so much that I haven't had a chance to have any of that quality time with him. And it's been really hard because he's, he's not there. I mean, and it's really hard for me to get a hold of him as well because there's no service where he is. He needs to drive to his spot across the island. Oh, oh, that's another big thing too. I mean, these days you're used to instant contact, right? I just feel like ever since I moved to Victoria, I tried to create this life not with Nigel. I moved here when we broke up. Like I, I went to the collective, started spending time with those people when we weren't when we weren't together. There's all these aspects and layers in my life that I've made separate from him, and it's all things that he likes, and all people that he likes, and all things he wants to do, and all places that he'd like to be at. But he can't go there anymore because I ruined it for him. You ruined it because you made him buy the boat or ruined it because? No, I ruined it for him because I, he was like, oh, I really want to go to this collective. And I was like, oh, I'm seeing someone there. We're broken up. And then he was like, well, I don't want to go to the collective anymore. It's going to make me uncomfortable. Right. But I said to him today, I was like, did you not acknowledge my blow up and did you not acknowledge how I was feeling and all this stuff with the boat? But he also added to the light that this, uh, everything that happened, happened after he spent the money on it. I think he's most upset that he had put himself in this situation thinking that I was gonna be there for him and it was something we could do together. And then I just immediately left when it got hard. Well, I mean, it wasn't just getting hard. It was, I mean, you guys were at a break point. I mean, you, you were at a point where you weren't treating him right because, you know, whatever you would reached a point of disrespect or usually that's when someone's about to break up, right? They start treating the person because they don't want to be around the person. And you can't just throw that away from the context. I think this is really... I know it's recording, I see that between me and you, but I wonder if I had subconsciously convinced him to do that decision so he would be around me for a while and I could see how I do on my own. Could be a little sneaky, but could be. <laughs> because I remember thinking like, maybe I'll move to Vancouver by myself and just see how things go by myself. Maybe I'll move to Nelson by myself and start a new life by myself. How far away can I get from Nigel? I can still be with Nigel, but I can see how things go on my own because I feel so invested into playing that role and being that relationship that I feel the most happiest and successful when I'm just on my own. But then I also, I feel that codependency and I feel that love and I, I feel that appreciation for that partner and I really value that. But I know that without that kind of distraction, I really, really feel really good and really confident. But how can I authentically say that when the week that he's gone, I just fall into another distraction? I can't believe it. Me and Gabe have been spending time together for a month now. I didn't believe it. was a long time. And it's only been the month that Nigel was gone. And I never went to the collective because I knew it would make Nigel uncomfortable. I tried to organize going to Fairy Creek when other people weren't there. I really distanced myself from a lot of people that I, I really enjoy spending time with and I have a lot of fun with because I knew that it would upset him. And I just created all these separations between, like in Nanaimo, for example, it would be my friends would see me and Nigel and they'd say like, me and Nigel, because that's all they knew. And Duncan was the same thing. But in Victoria, I've spent whole time kind of creating these separate worlds. And, you know, I feel good in my relationship with Nigel when I'm in Duncan. 
because everyone sees us as a relationship. I don't feel good about my relationship with Nigel and Victoria because everyone sees the complications of a relationship and us constantly bickering and us not being good. And it's got, yeah, like I don't hang out with Nigel and my friends because my friends are so used to me, you know, bickering about how shitty my relationship is or how unsatisfied or how bad and shitty and gross I feel. Like I, my friend Finn, who I were to see later, like got so mad at me. They started screaming at me about a car because they were so done with hearing all this shit about my relationship. And also Nigel was talking to them as well. So they were getting these two sides and having to be this counselor for both of us. And he was taking a giant toll on them. And then I go and hang out with Lindsay and I'm like, Nigel relapsed and he said he was going to kill himself and he's really depressed about being on Cortez. And Lindsay's like, fuck, should I come to Cortez? Like, should I talk to Nigel? Should I show up for him? I'm worried about him now that you say that. And so when I try to talk to my friends, like, hey, my relationship isn't really doing very good and it's upsetting me. It creates a separation between me and Nigel and my friends. And then since my friends don't know him as well as I know him, because I've lived here for a year, they just know me. There's there's just this entire difference of worlds. And then I notice with David, it's like, hey, are you going to that communal house tonight? Because I'm going there too. Or like, hey, can we go to the collective together? And it's just easier because all these places I've separated from Nigel. But with David, it's like, you're already a part of it. Mm. That was that was a whole thing. Thanks. <laughs> no, I mean I get it. I mean the thing is, you know, the more open you are with the world, the more feedback you get, kind of right. And so people get into the habit of discussing their lives, say with everybody. I used to go out with this woman who di didn't discuss her life with anybody. She was the most private person I had ever met. She just didn't discuss her affairs or other affairs with people. And I, I learned that, wow, there's a real power in that. Because then they don't think about you. They have no judgment. They, they know nothing. But I mean, it's, it's a very different life. It's not what I think you'd want. But I think at some point, you really get careful about who you share what with. And you know, at your age, you know, all you guys are so social and everyone these days has an opinion. In my day, you know, around my friends, you know, you, we just didn't talk the same way, you know, we just wouldn't share a lot. Just go out and play basketball and you know, very kind of rudimentary communication. <laughs> so your generation is very different. With the phone, the text, the email, the, the in social media. I mean, you're just a, you're you're in a communication frenzy, and it's so fast, and things can go off so quickly, and things go off that doesn't really have to go off. I mean, the thing is, I mean, you you are talking with Nigel. I mean, you are being honest with him, right? You have been honest with him. Mm -hmm, totally, and I've so been ridiculously honest with him. I mean, I told him that I was spending a lot of time with David and that I'd spend the week with him. And I told him I'd been cuddling with him and all that stuff. And then today I was like, hey, are you in a space where you're able to sit down and have an open discussion with me? And if you're not, let me know. Like maybe, and then I, I made a Zoom call and we had a call together and I was like, are you like, do you have a good enough service? Are you lagging out? And like, do you feel like you're able to really show up right now for this because it might be kind of harsh and I want to know what your mental state is and how things are going before I put this on you and if it's something that you can't take right now let me know but I want to be honest and authentic with you <laughs> right <laughs> it's like asking the question can I give you some feedback that's usually the, the bracer for people to brace themselves I think I've spent probably the last two years not getting a lot of feedback because I never really allowed myself to get so close with people hmm. to an extent. It's only really been the last year that I've needed to reach out with people because I felt like things have gotten so fast and complicated that I feel like I'm so used to kind of being this good guy that gave other people feedback but never got it back. Uh, I'm kind of a pain in the ass. Like I remember 
good example is one day that day that we were with Lindsay and Kyle and I like, sat down with Kyle and I was like I don't appreciate what the fuck you're doing not like that but you know, I sat and had a really big you know I don't like that and and called him out on everything and he just stood there and took it and acknowledged it took a moment processed it and moved on I don't think I have that skill <laughs> because it's nothing that I've ever really experienced before well it's I mean, it's a big thing to be able to distinguish between feedback and criticism and to honor the perspective and to realize how either attached they are or how much they're projecting. So a lot of people, they seem to project things uh, onto people. And at least I try to be objective. I try to sort of help people get clear but it doesn't really matter to me what you're going to do. Like I may say, okay, that's going to be a chain, train wreck, but that's that's it. Or I may, you know, I, I don't know quite what I do, but I try to, again, give feedback that's useful without being attached. I think that's the thing. Because when you're attached, you're like, oh, I need to help this person, or no, I'm, I need to share this because what this person is doing is wrong. Coming at it from more of an ego centered base than a de attachment state because you're like, hey, this is my views, coming at it from a place of judgment, coming at a place from your own values, and then pushing that on someone else so they can fit what you think is accurate. Yeah. I mean, you know, from a. Because I mean, you know, I, I'm interested in learning, I'm interested in, in people, no matter what we have to. You know, experience life, but I didn't have much coaching or training or learning or feedback around communicating in my twenties, especially like when I was your age. I mean, and I was, I was going kind of crazy in my own world. I was always using humor to deflect and not really paying attention, not listening and having an impact, but not really being able to, uh, you know, truly communicate what I wanted, what I felt. It was always a joke because my whole life growing up, that was my my mechanism for dealing with stuff. So you're like way advanced. And again, your whole generation is way advanced, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't get into troubles. Yeah. And I, I think it's it's like uh, again that personal space versus the one-on-one -on -one space. You you have to know clear about you. Oh my God, someone's at my window, one second. There was at my window. Okay. I gotta go. Yeah, Take I'll let you go. Time. I appreciate this. Thanks for showing up. Being nice. I'm gonna go walk into my train wreck. <laughs>